Have you ever wondered what a city that's in Africa but is very close to Europe looks like? This place has a mix of over 30 different cultures. With influences from many European cities. Yeah, that's right. We've arrived in Tangier. Tangier. So over the last eight days, we've traveled the breadth of Morocco. So we started our journey off in Marrakesh, all the way to Casablanca, from Casablanca to Fez. From Fez to Chef Chouan, and now we're here in Tangier, also known as a white city. We've heard so much about this place. So we've arrived at our first spot, which is... The Hercules Cave. Woohoo! Oh my God, guys, as soon as you walk in, you are greeted by these absolutely amazing views. And you know what? just look at it, it's absolutely stunning. I actually wasn't expecting it to be so nice here to be fair. But one thing to bear in mind is when you arrive, to your right there's parking there and it's 10 dirhams and it's quite secure so keep a look out for that. And if I was checking before on Google to see whereabouts in Spain and I think we located it, it's just here on the right hand side. Literally you can see Cadiz, Spain just in the distance there and I think to the right is a bit of Gibraltar as well. So that's how close we are to Europe and to Spain. Right people, let's go and see what this cave is all about. Let's see. So it's 60 dirhams each to enter the cave if you're a foreigner, 10 dirhams each if you're a Moroccan citizen. So that's quite common here in Morocco, I found, where there's different prices for tourists and locals. It is what it is. The lighting inside the cave is quite dark. Let's see if we can capture this cave and see if we can find Hercules. Oh my wow. God. This place is actually really, really impressive, right? It's so amazing, guys. Honestly, it is definitely one of those Instagram-worthy spots as well. You can see people lined up, taking their pictures, taking their shots. But this cave is just absolutely stunning. We've just been here for the last few minutes, just watching, hearing the sound of the waves. It's I was just, just about to say that. The sound of the waves when you stood here, even though there's quite a few people walking around, you can hear the waves coming in and out of the cave. If you're not familiar with the story of Hercules and his 12 labors, it was a series of difficult tasks that he had to complete to atone for his sin when he murdered his wife wife and his children after Hera, the god of marriage, inflicted madness on him because she tried to kill him ever since he was born. After he completed these 12 labours, he was finally resting in a cave which is said to be this place here. Hats, especially women, and I'm not sure if there's a different type of tribal people that live here, but these are pretty cute hats. Hiya! <laughs> Let us know in the comments below like what the significance of these hats are. Allergy! <laughs> Look at his word and I love it. I love it when he says that. But I have to say, the Hercules cave itself is very, very, very small. Literally a couple of minutes and you can walk around it. So 60 dirhams each as a foreigner to enter. Questionable, but it's still worth a visit. I, I definitely think it's worth it. And you know what? One thing that fascinates me about caves is how warm they are inside. It literally felt so cozy. So I understand why Hercules may have decided to have that at the point of rest. It's absolutely stunning. And one good thing as well is when you come outside, there's some cafes, restaurants, a souvenir place, and a place to get some snacks as well before you head off to your next place. So it's definitely worth you know, kind of considering that. Though, because where we are, it's a bit pricey, I would say, a bit pricey. If you do want to go down to the rock by the ocean, next to the sea, you can do that. Obviously, it's not push chair friendly. We've got Zakaria here, so we decided against that. We had a lovely time. Definitely recommend this spot, guys. <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, people, make sure you stop at this roundabout because there is a stop sign. I missed it, got pulled over, and uh, was almost charged $40. Fine, but being a Pakistani helps here, I think, because as soon as I said I'm Pakistani, he was like, just be careful when you drive, and I was like, okay. <laughs> and we went. Oh, it's just because he was nice. Yeah, it was because he was nice. But yeah, bear in mind, stop sign. It's our nap time for our little zikaria. So guys, we'll see you at the next stop. We made it to our next stop after zikaria's nap. 
It's called Rue de la Plague, which sounds like a Spanish name, strangely enough. But anyway, this road over here is a nice little promenade, I'd like to say, right by the port and it's facing the sea, obviously. And it's a nice little kind of stroll along the road. You've got some parking area there, which is around about three to four dirhams per hour. There's some vendors selling some peanuts and stuff. And in the car park itself, actually, you can get some coffee, some snacks as well. I might actually grab myself a coffee because I'm a bit uh, running low on energy right now. I need a bit of, bit of a booster. Yeah, it is a little frosty one. And he is being a bit parley recently, hasn't he? And my good friends, the seagulls, are here too. Nadia's just settling Zakaria down in the car and I behind me have seen a nice lovely coffee place. So uh, I see some desserts there too, but I need to save myself for dinner. Let's go and get a coffee. I think Nadia wants one too. And then we head to the next place. Wow, 17 dirhams for two coffee. I think that has to be the cheapest I've had so far. Not too shabby that, but let's go back to the car. Next place, let's go. We've just parked up and one thing I've realized, it's quite hilly here and the streets are really narrow. We're making our way to... Bab Kasbah, I believe, is the historical gate which leads you into like the main square sort of like plaza. So on first impression of this area, I've got to say it's got a very Spanish feel. You've got like the white buildings and the yellow painting all plastered around this town. It kind of gives me the Marbella sort of vibes. Right, we've had zero exercise in the last two weeks, so you know this hill walk is going to do us good. Ooh, <laughs> when I was saying it was very hilly, he wasn't lying. Feels like I've done an absolute massive workout right now. It's like deja vu we've been here before because we've been to so many Spanish forts, but whoa, another hill. Let's go. So it looks like behind me over there you've got a little memoir place which I think is some kind of museum for Ibn Battuta who was a very very famous old philosopher and traveller. And this is the area that I think where all the locals live. If you just look behind me, the street is absolutely beautiful. The trees and the plant pots and the white buildings. You just kind of have a look around and you can just want to get lost walking around here. Wow, it looks like you've actually got hotels here as well. So if you want to stay right in the thick of it all, you've got options. Walking downhill. Hey, one thing really good about this whole area is everything is pretty much walking distance. So I think you're looking at anything between sort of eight to 12 minutes walking between places. So we've been by Rue de la Plague and then we came to Bab Kasbah area. We're now gonna make our way down to Petit Soccer, which is downhill and then through to the Grand Soccer, hopefully, and maybe get something to eat. Wow, look at this. So literally walking towards Petit Soko and we come across this little workshop. Amazing handcrafted pieces of furniture, frames and everything. And as I mentioned, look at this detail in this table. You've got the mother of pearl in there. Wow. So we've done it again and we are in the back streets. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and I don't think we're lost just yet. But one thing I've noticed is it's very similar to all the other Medinas that we've been to. There's handicraft shops, there's food places, and loads and loads of barbers. This lovely yeah. man literally came running all the way to give oh, us directions. Right. <laughs> he's given us directions from the main Bab Kasbah all the way down to here. Yeah. And he's just followed us to make sure we weren't lost because the streets are a bit windy. But thank you very much. Well, thank you so much. You're a bubble there, man. All right. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why he reminds me of my dad for some reason. Oh, it's <laughs> me. Is this your shop? Yeah, it's a mixed shop, yeah. Oh wow, this is a shop. Should we have a look? Yeah. Okay, so everyone's getting inside the fridge, my Oh, look how cool this is. It's got a little door that opens up. Oh, I'm not sure that one. That is there with the moth. Thank you, I've got a good one. Good one. Good one. Nadia. Nadia. Nice to meet you. And Zakaria. Zakaria. I'm talking about. Hey, I think 
now is where the party's at. We are not party, the party, the party finds us! <laughs> I have no idea where we've ended up, but it's so loud. We're just outside Grand Central Cafe and there's people, you know when people are stood around, loads of noise and they have their phones up, something is going on. Can we check it out? Yeah. That's one of the problems of being short. You can't get yourself through the crowd. You've got to be right at the front to get a good view. It has been an absolute amazing day. It's a shame that we've been here for three days now and Zakaria has been ill for the past two, so we've pretty much been cooped up inside. And today we just had to come out and I'm so glad we did it. So if you're gonna come to the Grand Soccer area, right, the best time to come is on a Sunday night, I have to say 100% because look at it. It is busy as anything. Look at all these people. Let us know in the comment section below if this is a typical Sunday night here in Morocco because Oh, is this a normal every night thing? Well, exactly, because it's a Sunday and in the UK, Sunday after 4pm, literally every place is quiet. Everyone's at home, cooped up, having dinner and watching telly. But here, Moroccans, you guys know how to spend your Sunday evening. This is how you should do it. Adventure today has been. If you are debating whether or not to come to Tangier, you need to put on your list. You have to we come here. Have had a fantastic time. Literally, all we've done today is just walk about. That's it. Four square kilometers, right, which is nothing. <laughs> and every single corner we walked around, there was something new, there was something beautiful, and there was something exciting. And you know what? I've already looking across the road and it looks like, is that a patisserie? Yeah, patisserie, cafeteria, pizza. <laughs> anyway, on that note guys, I think if you want to do Tangier, you have to do it. It's definitely a place to visit. We really enjoyed it and I think my favourite part was walking through those Spanish streets because it felt like we were in España. Yeah, and I've got to say, you remember this morning the Hercules cave, that was pretty cute too. That was cool actually, that was. Well, yeah, definitely come here guys, it is a vibe. But on that note, our little baby Zagiria is super tired, we're going to get him in. But remember to follow your visions guys. We'll see you on the next one.